Hey Ben, it's 2023 and we need to talk about the elephant in the room. You mean the S300? It's so sleek. It's not an elephant at all. No, no, no. Come on, let's walk and talk. I don't see an elephant out here either. Were you expecting to? Never mind. I'm talking about the scientific industry's impact on the world, the footprint, more specifically the carbon footprint. Ah, uh, yeah, but Maddie, companies have green initiatives in their mission statements. Things are looking up. Not to mention those carbon offsets that help to save those investors that green. That's true, but you know, it's not perfect. Continuous improvement is the name of the game, and we really want to leave this place cleaner than we found it. But I always clean up the lab. I mean the world, Ben. Ah, uh, yep, that makes, that makes sense. The issue I'm running into here is how do we propose solutions to the industry that don't compromise the chemistry, but also don't hurt the bottom line? I have some ideas. To the lab. We just got out here. To the lab. Let's start with dry ice. Did you know that a chiller helps the roadmap use less energy, it uses less water than a faucet using cooling water, and has a lower environmental impact than dry ice? Bonus, the chiller provides constant cooling temperature while improving the overall energy consumption during distillation. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I said no compromising on the chemistry and it can't hurt our bottom line. Do you know how easy and inexpensive dry ice is? And dry ice is colder than water, so it should work better. Now bear with me here. Colder is not always better. Haven't you heard of the Delta 20 rule? It states that you only need a temperature difference of 20 degrees between your chiller and your vapor, and then between your vapor and your heating bath. Plus, you'll thank me when you have on-demand cooling and you don't have to constantly top off dry ice. Okay, I get that. And I will appreciate not having to burn my own energy running back and forth from the lab to see if my dry ice needs topped off. But how can I justify the cost? Chillers are really expensive. Don't worry. The chiller ends up paying for itself by eliminating the cost of dry ice. And I can prove it with math. Check it out. By the 22 month mark, the chiller will have paid for itself with the money saved by foregoing dry ice shipments. I also like the idea of cutting down greenhouse gas emissions by removing the bi-weekly dry ice deliveries. You know, according to the EPA, trucks emit 26% of greenhouse gases nationwide. I mean, any little bit helps. I could get on board with this. Switching from dry ice to chillers is just the tip of the iceberg for your distillation work. What do you mean? Well, in combination with smart sensors, your chillers can help you automate your distillation down to dryness. Plus, think of all those extra experiments you can complete while the rota wicks away your solvent. Like separating your messy reaction mixtures? But chromatography generates a lot of solvent waste. I'm already thinking green. Are you still intimidated by chromatography? You know, it's come a long way from manual glass columns. Now we have an automated flash and prep system. The software can predict the best separation parameters, cutting back on wasted time and wasted solvent. It's like having your own personal chromatography assistant at your fingertips. Not to mention, those optimized parameters allow for higher sample loading and less overall solvent use. I mean, less solvent use means less environmental impact and a lower cost. It's a win-win-win. But don't we need to do that work in a fume hood? I heard some bad stats recently about fume hood energy consumption, and that didn't sound too green. The Pure system has active ventilation, which means using way less energy than a traditional fume hood, which is great if you're doing normal phase separations. But if you really want to get a green star, see if you can develop your methods using reverse phase conditions. This means you cut back on even more organic solvents, just add water. That sounds great on paper, but rotor wraps are particularly inefficient at removing water. Especially when you have multiple fractions of interest, then I've got to do multiple sample transfers, I have to do more runs on a rotovap, and then I have to clean more glassware. This guy doesn't want to clean anything. I knew you'd be worried about cleaning. A parallel evaporator would be a great method to concentrate down a batch of samples in parallel before loading them onto your freeze dryer for lyophilization. This Syncor Plus Parallel 
evaporator recovers over 95% of your solvent. So it's not going in your lab or your lungs. Then the freeze dryer helps us get to sub 5% moisture content. And that's great for increasing the shelf life of my products. Yeah, and that solvent that you recovered off the parallel evaporator can be recycled and used for future reactions or purifications. That's green chemistry, and it saves business green in the bank. The only problem is I can't use it for my samples that are more than 500 mils. For those, I usually spend a while staring at a rotovap watching the evaporation. Probably not the most efficient use of my time. There's a solution for that. Just check the solvent library on the rotovap. The library contains preloaded parameters that can help you get the most efficient distillation based on the solvent you're evaporating. Not only does it reduce the energy usage of the rotovap, but it also protects the pump and lab from solvent vapor by maintaining the proper balance between evaporation and condensation. A safer lab, reduced power usage, and less pressure on me to pick all the right evaporation conditions sounds like a win-win for me. I just have one concern. Rarely are my fractions ever just one solvent. They're usually mixtures of solvents. Well, you can take it a step further with those smart sensors. These probes actively monitor the evaporation rate and cooling media to effortlessly pull away solvent and dry your samples. This is another great reason to switch to a chiller. We're on a roll here. I'm going to take it one step further. Imagine doing your separations with two non-toxic solvents. That means zero hazardous waste is generated. Now that's just downright futuristic. Well, the future is here. Buki has supercritical fluid chromatography now. With SFC, it's possible to do purifications with CO2 and minimal solvent, sometimes even just water. The CO2 will evaporate naturally at room temperature, and the remaining eluent can be taken care of on the rotovap, the parallel evaporator, or that handy freeze dryer you were just telling me about. Now that's the ultimate green separation. Well, when our brand new SFC arrives, we'll have to take it out for a test drive and show off all the cool applications that I can do. But for now, I think we've outlined some pretty great ways labs can be a little bit more eco-friendly. Not only eco-friendly, but also cost-efficient. Often the two go together hand in hand. Ben, I think you're ready to leave both this lab and our world a cleaner place. <laughs>